So today on War and Wait, we're talking New Year's Eve, all the things that come around with the New Year. We're going to talk about cocktails. So for those of you that are listening today and you're thinking, I got to go out and drink and eat tonight with my friends and family. How can I do that? We're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about what we did in 2022 for our health and how we set goals and how we learned about you know, how to really contend for our health. Just kind of giving you a recap of all the things that we've had on the podcast for 2022 and what's to come for 23. Let's jump in. All right, sisters, here we go. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about 2022. 2022 was a crazy year for me um, in so many levels. And I pick a word of the year every year. And last year, my word was progress. I wanted to make progress just a tiny bit of progress in my health. I wanted to make a tiny bit of progress in my family. I wanted to make a tiny little bit of progress in my wealth or income. You've listened to the episodes with Katie Jeffcoat about intentional margins and priorities. So what are our priorities and what do we intentionally fit in when we have spare time? And so we also call those in the program that I coach called the rocks, the rocks in your health, the rocks in your program, rocks in your calendar. What are the things that you don't give up? So for me, those three rocks are where I start my priorities are with family, health, and wealth. And don't get all weirded out when I say wealth. Wealth is just income. Like what is that wealth? And so I filtered everything that I did last year through the fact that I just wanted to grow a little bit in every place of my life. And so I'm wondering, like, what is your word of the year? Do you have a theme of the year? Do you have a phrase for a year? Do you have a scripture that you hold on for the year? What is it that you you filter your year through? Because I don't think it's necessarily that we have to make huge goals and big New Year's resolutions. But I do think that we have to understand where we're coming from. So if you go back to that the episode that I had with Julie DeLuca Collins, where we talked about having a mission statement in your life, you know, every really big organization and even small ones, any successful organization has a mission statement. So you need to know what your mission statement is. You know, what is it? What are your core values? We talked about that with Alisa um, in that episode. I mean, we have it's so many things that we talked about in 2022 on this little podcast. And talking about growth, let's talk about podcast growth. So this little podcast launched in June. I had taken several classes and courses with Steph Gass, who, by the way, y'all know I shout her praises. I've got a a couple episodes with her. You definitely need to go back and listen to those. Um, I've never taken courses that were so spot on. Like, you know, sometimes you buy courses and you're like, eh, I don't know if this was really worth it. I don't know if I really know what to do. But when it comes to starting a podcast and getting my business going in the right direction, hands down the best investment I've ever made. And, you know, we really talk about like when I, in order to be into the master class that I ended up being, I had to have the podcast launched. And I wanted to be in that course earlier in the year last year, but my podcast wasn't launched. I would pick up the podcast and I would work on it and then I'd put it down and I'd pick it up and then I'd put it down. Like, I don't have time for this. This is not, this is, is this going to be helpful to me? And then I realized it's not about me and every single thing I've ever done in life. When I realized it's not about me, then that's when success happens. So when I realized this podcast is for you, this pod, these resources that I bring for you from all these amazing women are for you. And it's my way of giving back. You know, I lost 56 pounds using Optavia. Everybody knows that. But there's a lot of things that go along with it as well. There's a lot of mental work that you have to do. And sometimes you can't do that work until you've done other work. That's why I brought Jane on to talk about binging because binging is a whole nother beast. I mean, yes, it's, I believe you need a special person or special coach you know, someone who really specializes in that to deal with some of the deep rooted binge issues. So when Jane came on, you know, she's able to talk to us about, about binging. And by the way, she's back and she's on the next episode. I'm so excited because I need, even as a client who comes on to, with me with full program, sometimes they still need that extra work 
around binging and it's not cheap sisters. Like hiring a one-to-one coach is never going to be, you know, inexpensive. Their time is valuable and it's worth every dime, but a lot of times people can't afford it. And so may, me being able to bring on some free resources for you to add to your weight loss journey, that is my gift. And that's my way of giving back. And I'm just so excited that I've been able to do so much with the podcast this year and grow with it personally and as well as you know, grow in the audience. Y'all, we're at the top 5% globally ranked podcast. I actually rank now, like, do you hear the excitement in my voice? I actually rank in, in when what we call keywords. So if you go in and put weight loss made easy into Apple, I'm on the first page. Like this is huge. So anyway, so we talk about growth through the podcast. The podcast has grown. Um, we should hit 5,000 downloads this week. I'm super excited about that. 5,000 may not seem like a big number to you, but I assure you, I never thought I'd even get to that number. I've got bigger numbers that I'd like to see us hit in 2023. But so when I think about progress, you know, I've, 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 you know, I feel like I made progress in a lot. So for those of you who have not listened, and this might be your first episode, I had four back surgeries in 12 months. My last surgery, which was a full um, S1, L5 fusion, was January 15th. So I kicked off 2022. And literally when I thought about progress, I just wanted to be able to walk from my car to my house without being in pain. That was going to be progress for me. Guys, I'm back to working out. Like I'm a, it's kind of silly watching me work out because there's certain things I can't do, but I'm actually moving my body to the point to where I can break a sweat now. So that's like huge progress. Um, so there's so many things that like, when I think about my health, like I wanted to, that was really my focus. I wanted to finish up my weight loss goal. I think I started, I think this day last year I had lost 49 pounds and my goal was 50. I ended up losing 56, but I didn't, I did that by January 15th. So I went into 2022, just wanting to lose a couple more pounds and then to maintain it for the year. And you know what? For the most part, I did. Like I had another procedure back in um, September that I didn't really make too public because it's kind of one of those things that you just don't want to talk about. Well, it was pretty intensive and I did gain a few pounds during that. Um, I gave myself a lot of slack. Um, I got myself into a somewhat of a pity party and kind of had to really, I had to reach out to my coach and say, Hey, by the way, like I'm letting my mind go the wrong way. I had to tune in and listen to some of my own episodes and remind myself how I got to where I was. So health wise, I think I've made some progress. I've definitely made huge progress because I have never maintained a 50 pound weight loss for a year ever ever. Like I've never lost 50 pounds at one time either. So anyway, so I think about progress and I think about all the different things. So, so let me tell you a little bit more about the progress that I had in 2022. I helped over 70 clients, 70 clients this year. That warms my heart to know that whether they lost 10 pounds or they lost 84 I helped 70 clients this year. And then I've also helped a couple people start helping other people. And the ripple effect is beautiful to watch it through families, to watch it through, you know, friend groups. It's just a beautiful thing to watch. And so to me, that progress, that is bigger than I ever imagined. Um, Just because of the way I started out 2022. So that was one. The other thing I made progress in was... um, Y'all know, I ended up be writing two chapters in two separate books. So this is really not progress. This is like, what the heck progress? Both books are now internationally um, best, international bestsellers. So I'm technically an international bestselling author, which I think is just great because the one book really was personal, was really, really personal. The other one was really about health and wellness. How did I get there? All of it came from 
In order to understand how you get to the point of being overweight, you do have to understand why you got there and how you got there. And it's a process that you work through and you can do that while you're losing weight, before you're losing weight, or after you've lost your weight. But you still at some point have to dig into that because it shows up in other places. I'm still doing work. I still see when I'm not choosing food to be my comfort, I'm choosing other things. I'm still seeing that because it's not a one and done. It's a process. That's what we call what you hear me say and others say we contend for our health every day. And it's because it's a lifelong journey. You know, one of my favorite things that I think about is that God is not done with me till the day that I die. Every day is a new day that I can choose to make progress. Or I can choose my health. I can choose my family. I can choose to do the right things for my wealth and my income on a daily basis. Because those are my priorities. Believe me, my intentional margins are really full of things, of other things that, that I like to do. But at the end of the day, what are the, what are the three things that are your top three priorities? What are your top five core values? You know, I cannot express how invaluable that core values workbook is that um, we had in the episode with Elisa. But we're not going to go back there. So anyway, let's just talk. So I've had, what else have I done? Oh, Revelation Wellness. How can I forget? Revelation Wellness, it kind of, uh, I wish I could tell you the story of how I found Revelation Wellness, but I can't. It's a story that I'm going to, I keep very privately. Um, but I did find Revelation Wellness at a time where I was struggling spiritually and I was using their resources to get my mind right. I was using those resources to get me spiritually fit. Um, I was I had one of my favorites that, that we do with Revelation Wellness is Walking with Jesus. It's a great program. Highly recommend checking it out. So it really, that's when I would go out for my morning walks when that my back was hurting so bad. And it would just... And I would just push myself a little bit more and more and more every day. I was using a lot of the Revving the Word um, podcast, which is really just exercise to spiritual music with a tempo to get you up, you know, up tempo and low tempo and then a cool down. But I was really using a lot of the meditative type um, podcast as well. So that's how I found Revelation Wellness. And a webinar popped up and it says... I am never going to teach. It said, become a Revelation Wellness instructor, but I'm never going to teach a fitness class. I was like, what does that mean? And why would you do that? Like, I didn't understand. So I watched the webinar and then I did some research. And the program, health wise, what nutrition wise, philosophy wise, it lined up to what I do now. It lined up perfectly with my core values. It lined up perfectly with how I want to fuel my body. It lined up perfectly with how I want to move my body. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to become a fitness instructor and I'm never going to teach a class. So I signed up to become a Revelation Wellness instructor. It was a very intense program over about three months of intense Bible study, intense anatomy and fitness instruction. Like it was a lot of hours, people. Like, I don't know how I did it because I did that in conjunction with like my podcast master course and Revelation Wellness overlapped. So those about, it was about three weeks of, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I had so much and I'm just like, I'm juggling so many things. I've got so many things in place. And then the podcast was growing and my client list was growing and the books were coming out and it was all happening at one time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? And I'm like, what a beautiful mess. What a beautiful mess. So as all those pieces have come together, so I finished my Revelation Wellness instructor training with a group of women that I just absolutely just love doing that journey with them. And I learned so much. But the reason that I wanted to do Revelation Wellness as an instructor was because of the Revelation Wellness book. The Revelation Wellness book is a book that you can get on Amazon. You can go to my website and you can go to my favorite things page and it's right there. You can click it. You can buy it. You can buy the Audible. You can do it all by yourself. You don't need me. 
However, there are a lot more resources that come along with it if you do that book with an instructor. Um, they are they tell us and encourage us to teach it as a group or one on one. Well, one of the things I realized going through it for myself was that it was a lot of information, and it's an eight week study, nine sessions, eight weeks. There's a lot of information there, and you need to take your time to to get through it, and some chapters were easier than others. So I created the Weight Loss Battle Plan. So it's my way, my custom way of teaching the Revelation Wellness. So we still use those eight modules, but you get to do it in your own time. So if it takes you eight weeks, great. If it takes you six weeks, great. If it takes you 18 weeks, great. The only limitations I had to put on it was because there are videos there that you cannot, you can only get through a facilitator like myself. There's videos that I can only give you access for for six months. So you do have to be finished in six months, but who can't watch the videos in six months? But out of that time, what you do do have is you get nine one-to-one coaching calls with me. No other program that I have looked at can you get nine one-to-one calls, even if it's just for accountability, for what I can do the Revelation Wellness Course for. So I'm going to get, you get tons of resources. You get a really good book that gives you not only how to be spiritually fit, but physically fit. And then also brings in solid nutrition. And solid nutrition in this particular book is exactly, exactly what maintenance looks like in Optavia. Yeah, you heard me say that. So many people misunderstand what what Optavia is all about. And not often do I say, oh, it's Optavia. And we don't, we do that because people go Google it. They look it up and they're like, oh, I can't do that because they don't understand the habits of health and the life book that goes along with it. They don't understand that you get a one-to-one coach that you can talk to and reach out to at any time. I'm telling you, coaching and having a one-to-one coach is definitely been one of the things that I did not understand before one, I started my weight loss and two, I started this journey in my own personal development. You know, also in 2022, I did hire, actually it was in 2021, but we didn't finish until 2022. I did hire a business coach, a one-to-one business coach. And if I told you what I paid for that business coach, you would all fall out of your chairs or slam on the brakes or choke on your drink because it was it was a huge leap for me, but it also put it into perspective for me what it cost and the value of people's time. So anyway, so progress in my health, in my personal development, I did make some progress, you know, even though being honest, my income because it went down from when I worked full time in healthcare, I do believe my wealth has increased drastically. Because I've not, I'm building, I mean, I've got books and I've got courses and I've got a podcast and I have clients that I'm building and that wealth brings happiness and that wealth brings joy and passion. So I'll take a income that brings passion and joy over an income that brings misery, frustration, stress, family strife, and exhaustion any day. So there we go. Now we've talked about, spent 20 whole minutes talking about progress from last year. Oh my gosh, we got to make this fast. I try to keep these episodes short so that you'll keep listening. So my word for 2023 is growth. So you heard what I did with progress. Imagine what my vision boards look like, what my goal list looked like, around the word of growth. I still took those same three priorities and said, what would it look like? Growth in my family, growth in my health, growth in my wealth. What would that look like? Y'all, okay, so I'm just going to tell you. Growth in my family means grandbabies. And I say babies. We know for sure if Our daughter can hold out until tomorrow. We will have at least one new grandbaby in 2023. 
and Lord willing, and it will not, and we are on our knees praying that we will have grandbaby number two in 2023. And I just, you know, so our family is growing. Those relationships are going to change. Um, one of the things I forgot to say in 2023 was that my dad moved in with me. Those fam- that family dynamics is is changing. I'm an only child. My parents are getting older. So family growth, what does that look like? So yeah, so we kind of grew. We grew in a, a senior citizen child, so to speak. And then hopefully grandbabies. For my health, what do I want my health to look like? Yeah, I want to go through 2023 without a procedure or a surgery. This may not happen. Unfortunately, the procedure that was done in in September, they're wanting to do a revision of some sort. And I'm just scared to death because I've had too many revisions of everything at this point. So I think I'm, I want to put that off if I can, but it's very possible that's coming very quickly in 2023. But that was really what I wanted growth-wise, health-wise. I wanted to not go have a surgery. I wanted to be strong and I want to be fit. And here you go. I want to lose 20 more pounds. So I'm going to put it out there to the world publicly that I want to lose 20 more pounds from my goal. So instead of me saying 56 pounds, it will be 76 pounds. Um, When I got to my goal, I really felt like I was at a very healthy weight. It was the first time, I think, since middle school probably that I had been in the BMI chart and like in a really good range, but you know, there's a significant range there and I could get to the, I could get to the, to the lower end a little bit. I do think I had a few more pounds, but right now I'm about 10 pounds up. So I need to get that 10 pounds off and then possibly another 10. We'll see. Who knows? And then in my wealth, I want to increase, you know, how many of you do the course? The courses today is 197. 197, you get a book, you get eight you get eight weeks of modules. You get a kickoff call, a follow-up call. Your eight calls in between. You get all the videos. And today it's only one ninety-seven. But the course does need to sell for four ninety-seven because it is a lot. And even at four ninety-seven, with what you get, is such a great deal. That as of January second, I'm going to give you until the second. Um, it's going to four ninety-seven. And right now, I'm going to let you use that holiday code up until January 2nd. If you're listening to this on January the 5th, and you call me and say, Keitha, I really want to do the course. I didn't realize the coupon was expiring. Is there any way that you can help me? We'll come up with something. I don't know that it will be the the full 300 off, but we'll come up with something. So don't say, oh gosh, I can't do it now because it's late. Don't worry about that. If you are saying, you know, I'm ready to go full full program. I want to do full program with you and I want to do the Revelation Wellness. I don't recommend you doing both at the same time. Um, not starting at the same time. You absolutely can start one or the other, but get started on one or the other and give it 30 days and then move to the other. But I'm happy to help you. We have some great great incentives that Optavia is offering right now. You've seen it all over the internet. I don't know why we even try to hide it. They're everywhere. Every time I open my Facebook, every time I open the internet, it pops up. So there are some great specials right now that I can help you with, and those do expire January 31st. So make sure that if you are looking to lose weight and you want to lose weight fast and you say you want to lose 10 pounds in January, this is what you need to do, and you need to, to go ahead and do that today. And we can get you on program and I can help you. So when I think about my, my wealth, I want to increase my clients. That doesn't, that's not a bad thing. That means I'm helping more people lose weight. So as of December 31st, 2020, 22, I had 71 clients on my client list. And this episode at the end of 2023, I want that to say, hmm, 230. That's my goal. 230 is what I'd like to see between Revelation Wellness and my Optavia clients. So there you have it. There is my word of the year, growth. I hope you will take some time and decide what your three priorities are. Just pick three. What are your three priorities for 2023? And then 
What would you like to see happen in those three areas of your life? And then pick a word. Sometimes you write down what you want first, and then you can see a theme. So you can pick your word and then pick your word. So then every time you put something on your calendar in 2023, you can say, is this going to grow me? Which is my word is growth. Is this going to grow a relationships or spiritual health, physical health, mental health, or income? That's how I would put that through my calendar. Like sometimes, yes, blocking off four hours to go meet a friend for lunch or for dinner, that very much is growth. That very much is mental health. That it very much is spiritual health. Anyway, I could do this episode for for an whole hour, but we're not going to. So the last thing I want to talk to you about today, because it is New Year's Eve, and there is nothing I have found that is more stressful for my clients is eating and drinking out in social events. So you all know how I feel about keto diets. I've done them. I am a keto queen. I've lost so much weight doing keto, but I've also gained double back. So I never promote a program. And hear me, I do not promote a program that does keto, where that you're in ketosis all the time and have to stay in ketosis all the time. I don't promote that anymore. However, the way that you eat on keto and the way that you drink on keto is very similar to any other healthy program because you're limiting your sugar and you're limiting some of your calories. So what I want you to do, and it's this simple, I'm going to post some things today, some pictures, but that's going to give you some ideas, but I want you to go to Google and type in what are the best, best low calorie and low carb alcohol drinks. That's what I want you to go in and type. And what you're going to find is that you really can drink certain things, but it's the mixers that get you. So you can have, let's just say you have vodka, but when you mix that with a bunch of fruit juices and a fruity tooty drink, what you have is a lot of calories and a lot of sugar that your body really is just going to use to get you to, it's going to make you gain weight. So what you, and if you're in weight loss phase right now, you don't want to come out of that. You know, when you're eating no sugar, low sugar, because that's really what we focus on with Revelation Wellness and Optavia is getting the processed sugars out of your diet, your processed sugars and your artificial sweeteners out of your diet. I personally, when it comes to drinking alcohol and doing mixtures, I think that artificial sweeteners are absolutely the best choice so that you can do that. Like like the, the zero sugar sparkling ice waters that are flavors, those are fabulous. Throw a couple shots of vodka in those and they're perfect. Like these are easy things. But when you're going to bars, it's hard. But what I have noticed is I'm not a big drinker. I maybe drink four times a year. Really, I mean, let's just be honest. But when I do, I do ask, do you, can you make that a skinny version? A lot of bars and restaurants now, especially if you get to ones that are a little bit, you know, nicer, they always have the skinny syrups. They always do because they know, they know that is, that is, keto is the trend. Keto, people are eating, eating and drinking keto. And so, I don't want you on a full keto program, but there are parts of keto that are very healthy. It's when you completely eliminate it and you put your body into ketosis. That's where it crosses the line. You never want to go to ketosis. You want to stay right on the edge of it. And that's how we get you in fat burn and get you burning, burning off calories. So hard liquor, vodka, rum, tequila, gin, brandy, whiskey, all have zero carbs. Did y'all know that? Zero carbs. They do have calories, however. Dry wine, dry wine, dry white wine, dry rosé wine, dry sparkling wine has a very, has a lower carb count, but has a high calorie count. 
And the other thing to look at is that I think it's, and it varies from brand to brand, but you're talking two to four carbs for every five ounces. So if you're going to drink, and I think it's about 150 calories. So if you're going to drink a wine, a dry wine, you're only going to get five ounces. It's not going to go very far. Like that's, that's, you know, one drink, one, most, most wine drinkers don't just drink one. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So be careful with wine. Um, light beer, right on the edge of maybe okay, not okay. However, there are so many low, low carb beers now that you can do. Um, and then any kind of seltzer water, make sure that you get the, you can get the flavored ones with no sugar added and that will help you. So, but what to, what to avoid is the simple syrups, the agaves, margarita mixes, sweet and sour mixes, even bitters and ginger beer, all those that come in those mixed drinks in restaurants, those are always going to be not great for you. They're going to have too much sugar. The other thing to avoid is, like I said, is the fruit juices. Fruit juices and regular cola, make sure that, you know, that you're not, that if you're going to do something with a, a, a Diet Coke, make sure it's Diet Coke and not regular Coke. Um, and don't think, oh, I'm at a bar and I'm eating all these things and I'm drinking all these things that it doesn't matter because it does. Always, I'm always saying make that 1% better choice. Make that, we talked about that with the, one of the episodes with Elisa. Um, make 1% better choices. So does that mean that, you know, this time I just have a tequila shot, not the margarita. And drink water after with lime. You're good. Um, sweet wines. Always off the table. Rieslings, Moscatos, Ports, Sherry's, any dessert wines are always off the table. Um, liqueurs. Liqueurs are get mixed into a lot of mixed drinks um, where they add it just to add those extra flavors. Um, those are loaded with sugar. You want to stay away from those. Um, hard ciders, wine coolers, out of the question unless they are like a Truly that says it's zero calories. Sangrias, same thing. Keep it off. Keep it off of your... New Year's Eve, I'm going to drink and eat. So when you're out and about, I want you to think about, um, like, I'm going to give you some examples. So if you do a 1.5 ounce serving of tequila, 1.5 ounce, think about that. It's 97 calories. If you do six tequila shots, Lord help you if you do. You're at 600 calories. That is why drinking can put a little bit of weight on. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today because we don't talk about it often. A lot of programs tell you absolutely no alcohol while you're trying to lose weight. I kind of agree with it. However, we still have to live life. And a lot of people like to enjoy a cocktail on New Year's Eve. So I hope this is helpful for you, but go to Google and put in best low calorie, low carb alcoholic drink. If you're doing New Year's Eve at home, you are going to find some amazing recipes of very low calorie, low carb drinks. If you're going out to a restaurant or to a party, When you Google that, you're going to find all the best ways, kind of the hacks to do that. So I'm not going to try to coach you on how to go out and drink on New Year's Eve, but I am going to give you that resource, which is Google. Everybody loves Google um, to see how you can, can eat and drink. So I can tell you tonight, I think, I think we're going to a Mexican restaurant. And so I'm going to be ordering a lot of shrimp. Shrimp, 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 shrimp. Um, I love um, shrimp fajitas um, without, and then I don't eat the onions. um, And usually get double because I can, because that fits right into my program. Um, So I'll definitely have shrimp or I'll have chicken um, fajitas. And then if you follow me on Facebook at all, you know that I always get bell pepper slices at the Mexican restaurant. So I will have definitely have bell pepper slices with a little bit of cheese dip and I dip it and then I shake the cheese off and then there's just such a tiny bit left on it that it just gives it that little flavor and then I also use those same bell pepper slices I use them 
in the salsa. And so they're crunchy. I don't miss the chips because tomorrow when I get on the scale, the scale will not be up. Will I have a drink? Absolutely, I'm going to have one or two. Depends. You know, one of the things that I learned during during my research for this episode about around alcohol, because I wanted to make sure I gave you some solid tips, and I found it on several different, very reputable sites, the things that I found, um, is that when you have a very low, your body's holding a very low glycogen level. So when you're not eating a lot of processed sugar, a lot of artificial sugars, your body and your liver are really, has processed all the glycogen. And so your body's using it as it gets it. Whereas when you're eating a lot of sugar and you're eating a lot of carbs and you're eating a lot of junk food, your body holds on to all this glycogen and it has a storage of it. So when you don't have a lot of storage, what happens is that your body can process things faster. So I did learn that actually alcohol has a has a quicker and more potent effect on you when you've been eating sugar-free. So be careful with what you drink. If you've just started eating low sugar, low carb this year, and you've not drank since you started that, take it slow on the drinks. So I think I will probably have my normal tequila shot with water and lime juice. Um, I think that's probably what I'm going to go with. Unless they have a, if they have a skinny margarita, I might get one. I don't know, but I don't think this restaurant does have a skinny margarita. So anyway, happy new year. I can't wait to hear what your goals are, what your word of the year is and how we can work together. You know, the best way for you to get started with me is to go to my website, coachkeitha.com and go under book with me and and schedule your first appointment with me. It's a 15 minute, 30 minute, whatever it takes. I don't really, I only watch the clock when I absolutely have to. Um, and it's an appointment that where we just kind of talk about what is it that you want? Like, what are you looking for? Are you looking for mental clarity, spiritual clarity, physical weight loss? What is it that you're looking for? And then I point you in the right direction. And that could be one of my courses, it could be my program, or it could be someone else's. Um, but I really take that opportunity just to get to know you. It's never any pressure to to buy anything. It's just a freebie call. It's like I said, it's my way of giving back. I mean, I have to, I have I am so overly blessed that that I love giving back. Um, it gives me such joy. So that's the easiest way. The second way that you can work with me is to go to Facebook and. Put into the search bar, Healthy Habits 101. That is my free Facebook group. Here you go, ladies. In that group is everything you need to lose weight. Everything. I give it to you. All of it. All free. But what I don't give you is the one-to-one coaching on how to get through it. Um... I don't, there, there isn't there. That's, that's the difference of being on in a program with me or not is that you get the one-to-one coaching. And I do pop into that group from time to time. Um, I do post things in that group. However, the full program is there for you to pick up. And if you want it, you can do it. So just need to come over and join the group. Um, And then also make sure that you're signed up for my weekly newsletter, the weekly newsletter, you get a free recipe you get reminded that the podcast episode has come out um, and then I share anything new that's going on. So that's where you're going to get those coupon codes for courses. That's where you're going to get updates on specials, that type of thing. So those are the things that you can do. Three things to get ready for 2023. Schedule an appointment with me just to chat. Jump over to Facebook, join the Healthy Habits group, or join the newsletter. So anyway, I can't wait to hear from you. Talk to you soon. Bye.